Faceless comedy. Good evening and welcome to the sixth show in the series of what many people regard as ten. In the news this week, controversy in religious circles as Bishop Carey tries to flog the Pope a set of six genuine holy grails. <laughs> Sport and Gary Lineker has second thoughts about his move to Japan after seeing the team strip he'll have to wear. <laughs> and Michael Burke is sacked by the BBC after trying to mate with an ostrich. Something to bear in mind when you next see him read the news. <laughs> On uh, Ian Hislop's team, someone who is both a football fan and a comedian, and to prove it, he supports Millwall, oh. Danny Baker. Oh. <laughs> and with Paul Merton this week, someone who's been in both Sooty and Roland Rat, and his court case comes up next week, <laughs> comedian Steve Steen. <coughs> So let's tear madly into round one. Two pieces of film footage per duo. Ian and Danny, a dark horse for you to identify. Mm -hmm. ah. Delivery of American stuff. That was Ross Perot. <laughs> There's a lot of interest in him because he's a millionaire and he knows nothing about politics. Uh, which means he's the same as all the other presidents. Was <laughs> uh, that being delivered? So it's one of those agencies, you know, a uh, crack agency. Your drug's delivered in 30 minutes or the fix is free. Piled <laughs> <laughs> up the doorstep. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a billionaire US uh, businessman, Ross Perot, who's taken the lead in the presidential opinion polls. On the slogan, trust Perot, he's too rich to steal. Tell that to Robert Maxwell's employees. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Perot, whom I'm sure many will remember as the little old man all the girls used to chase after on the Benny Hill show, um, emerged as favourite this week after President Bush's number two, Dan Quayle, blamed the entire LA riots on sitcom actress Candice Bergen. A bit like blaming Brixton riots on Donald Sinden. <laughs> He, he, he did lob a few petrol bombs. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Paul and Steve, uh, where's this green and pleasant land? Um, the hosepipe ban that's um, length and breadth of the country from Newcastle down to just right. below Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Charles actually solved this problem today. There was a wonderful um, clip of him. He was about to say there's a terrible water shortage and we really need some rain. And apparently it started raining. Yeah, it did the whole thing. Banging in on the sides. Well, I, I did my part around the back of the studio for irrigation just before we came on the air. So <laughs> <laughs> if only more people in Britain felt like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the government is now urging people to share a bath. In fact, Paddy Ashdown has already volunteered. <laughs> and, uh, and Prince Charles, champion of environmental causes, suggests simple water-saving methods such as not watering your garden. Yes, it's a good way of caring for nature. Kill it. <laughs> I think they've stopped putting water in Prince Margaret's gin, which is a good thing. <laughs> This drought is apparently the worst for 250 years, although uh, quite how we know what the weather was like in 1742, I don't know. Presumably the town cry would say, here endeth the news, and now here's the Earl of Ketley with the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Brought this to you by PowerGen. Uh, Ian and Danny spot the barrel of Newcastle export. Paul Gascoigne, who uh, this week joined Lazio. Or in fact, I think he joined ITV. Fighting back in its uh, Sky Sports. Mm. They can have... Who is Paul Gascoigne? He is a footballer, my love. <laughs> a footballer, my love, of some note and gurning a capability. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, ITV is. Is that Association Football? Association or Football. 
Yes, he's joined Lazio, um, and we saw the uh, shareholders in Bupa going wild in there. The, the, the fatted calf returned home. <laughs> <laughs> but he finally signed for him, didn't he, after um, he did. 100 years this week? <laughs> Spurs manager Terry Venables said uh, watching him go was like watching your mother in law driving off a cliff in your new car. <laughs> So a mixture of terror and terror, then. <laughs> his, uh, his new manager at Lazio, uh, Maurizio Mancini, said, After 15 months, I feel like a father who has been awaiting the arrival of a baby. Little does he know how right he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Steve, uh, get your joss sticks out. Oh, oh that's the soon, worrying his friends. Um... Yep. <laughs> there's Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's Gaza. <laughs> This is the free festival that, that happened uh, a little while ago, during the drought. It's a delightful rural scene, isn't it? Mm -hmm. People who care so much about the environment, they fill it, they fill it full of shit and condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Used what? needles and old crisp packets. <laughs> it's, uh, yes, it's all about the uh, hippie convoy that's descended uninvited on the Worcestershire village of Castle Morton. <laughs> <laughs> the invasion took the local police completely by surprise, but Sergeant Mike Nichols said that police will not be assessing why their intelligence broke down. <laughs> Well, they've never bothered in the past, have they? Uh, 25,000 hippies have now defecated in the fields and gardens of Castle Morton. A 19-year-old Sandra Johnson explained, We just want to enjoy ourselves. If they had put up toilets, we wouldn't have messed the fields. Who are they? The sheep? <laughs> As for uh, the local community, one farmer said, I keep my shotgun by my bed and I haven't slept for two nights. Well, I'll keep it somewhere else, then. <laughs> On, um, on which, uh, far out note, we bring this first round to a cosmic end, and it would uh, appear that, uh, well, both teams have got off to an equally flying start, as Paul and Steve and Ian and Danny have a similarly replete four. Round two hoves into view, but before we embark, a brief moment of thought for our caption competition. Nice. One potentially amusing photograph per team. Ian and Danny, this is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Steve, this for you. <laughs> and uh, in the next 20 or 25 minutes, whichever is the longer, they must concoct an amusing caption or two. And while they muse, we move deftly into our second round, which takes place in the headline world of CD tabloids. Uh, one each to explain. Paul. Ants hold secret to bug-free BT system. Um, this is, I couldn't. I don't really know what this is about. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> but is it something to do with the fact that the behaviour of ants, the way they carry out tasks among mm. themselves, has convinced BT to adapt their software to uh, solve various problems that might occur within the system? Uh, I'm glad you didn't know what it's about. <laughs> no. Judging yes. just from what's there, you know. <laughs> yes. Does the Queen Ant get a salary of about five hundred million pounds a year? <laughs> All sort of Syrian valance ant in the middle, stuffed full of honey and royal jelly and honey. Uh, <laughs> you become an extremely bitter man. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about ants that you hate so ants. much? Uh, yes, I'm okay. afraid you're right. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> I have to tell you, it's uh, British Telecom who plan to revolutionise the way they operate their telephone system by studying the behaviour of ants. So uh, if your phone starts to play up, just pour a kettle of boiling water down it. <laughs> the, uh, the new BT system is based on a handful of rules that control ants as they forage for food. Apparently if they find food, they take it home. If they cross a trail left by another ant, they follow the trail until they find food. If they find nothing, they wander around until they do. Much the same set of rules governing Glaswegians and pubs. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, uh, why are the uglies sitting pretty? Hmm. Um... Yeah, so two points ahead at the moment. Yes. Um, <laughs> the <only thing. laughs> oh, what is it? Please. It was, I, it was I, I think meant... this has just become a grudge match. I think it has. Yeah. <laughs> Let me roll it the sleeves a minute. Hang around. Get serious about this. The uglies are, oh. um, in fact, in California. They, they pass some legislation. The bosses actually aren't allowed. Now, to discriminate against people with, you know, spots and, you know, fat people. Mm. So, um, that would probably be Gaza's next stop. <laughs> Santa Cruz. It is. It's the, so you're uh, not allowed to call short people short anymore. They're now vertically challenged. Vertically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
do and bald people are follically challenged. <laughs> How odd Different that you should pick on those two <laughs> physical characteristics. <laughs> It's, uh, it is the, the law passed yesterday by the Santa Cruz City Council prohibiting job discrimination against people who are ugly. Apparently this law is aimed at protecting those who are fat, short, toothless or gormless or just anatomically repulsive. <laughs> so it should come as a relief to Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> the, uh, the case that provoked it involved a woman who was rejected for a job at a health food shop because she weighed 21 stone. <laughs> but uh, under the new law she's managed to find herself a new job as a chimney sweep. <laughs> Which uh, looks like being a permanent position. <laughs> Danny, a, uh, a cry of despair for you. Bad news, Helen, it's another fondue set. This is a Tufts wedding governor. Uh, mm -hmm. And she's put up one of these absurd, grisly, Fergie style humour wedding lists, hasn't she? Where she wants um, pants for the husband with home of the crown jewels on the front and all these <laughs> wonderfully amusing royal affectations. I mm -hmm. think it's Helen, it's Helen Windsor, it would be, yeah? It would be. It's got to be Helen of Troy, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> she can get 5,000 soldiers inside a fondue set, could you? No, it's, uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's Helen Windsor. What are uh, you News on? of the Trojan War wouldn't have hit the papers yet. <laughs> <laughs> not the Daily Express, not anyway. Not in the week. <laughs> and not in the week. The Gaza signs as well. It would be in no. there. No. It's, uh, it's the wedding list that uh, Lady Helen Windsor and uh, her fiancé Timothy Taylor have uh, distributed to their guests in order to avoid the old embarrassment of getting six absolutely identical Ferraris. <laughs> The list includes uh, a Cornish tea service for when her cousin the Queen comes round, a set of Pim's jugs for when Princess Margaret pays a visit, and a Super Nintendo computer game for when the Queen Mother pitches up. <laughs> and, uh, and in the entertainment section, they've requested a foil cutter. Yes, nothing more entertaining than an evening in cutting foil, I always think. <laughs> and uh, finally, Ian, a self-explanatory piece of tabloidies for you. Edwina Gay Love Shocker. <laughs> Well, it's not about Jason Donovan. No, no, no that's amazing. <laughs> make, how, make, how, make, how could it be? Yeah. Could, <laughs> could be. Could, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. You've got to be a bit careful with Edwina Curry because she uh, sued the Observer once for comparing her with Charlotte Rampling. You'd think Rampling would have sued, wouldn't you? <laughs> Edwina Gay Love Shocker. I haven't a clue. She's, uh, she's suggested that um, the age for consent amongst men and men should be lower to 16. It is. Well done. It's, uh, well, it's the call yeah. for an extra two points uh, by right. Edwina Curry this week that the age of consent for male homosexual intercourse be lowered to 16. That's good news for 16-year-old gays and bad news for hamsters. <laughs> um, this is... This is uh, Mrs. Curry pointed out quite reasonably that uh, although teenagers were presently forbidden from having gay sex, a boy can join the army at 16, and then at 18, he can have a few drinks at my local pub and vote for me. Wow. Yes, he'd need to have had a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unusual for a Tory MP like Edwina Curry to be so encouraging towards teenage boys having sex. It's usually male Tory MPs who are keen on that. <laughs> Which, uh, pointless observation, acts as a full stop to the second round, and the sorry tale is that uh, Ian and Danny have a worthy but dull six, and Paul and Steve have a plainly superior ten. Round three is our archive round, as our regular viewer will know. Two pieces of otherwise <laughs> discarded film footage rescued from the BBC Shredder just in time to be reinstated for our memory contest. Ian and Danny, uh, what occurred thereafter for you? Tonight we look at who actually wrote the two conflicting accounts. We talk to the former civil servant Clive Ponting about how they think inside a minister's private office. This was the first of Heseltine's flounce outs. Oh, was it? I think... And he flounced out of cabinet later, sort of tossing his golden mane. Um, <laughs> saying, I tossing don't want to be what? in your cabinet anyway. What was he tossing? <laughs> it's it's all right, it's legal now, we just read it. <laughs> well, uh, let's see how things progressed. Also tonight, on the eve of tomorrow's crucial meeting of Western shareholders... I'm not appearing on a programme in which Mr Clive Ponting's views are presented as a serious representation of civil servants' views. Could, could you just hold on a moment, Mr. Well, let me just... Can I just... Well, I'm... Gone to toss his golden lamp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, uh, it's Michael Heseltine doing a John Knott, or, or Steve Steen and Paul Merton, uh, leaving the studio uh, back in 1986, in the days when he was the long-haired, volatile, wild man of politics. How the years have uh, failed to make any difference at all. <laughs> uh, Paul and Steve, a uh, party political broadcast for you, but on whose behalf? Capital punishment must be restored for terrorist, gangster and drug-dealing murderers. Criminal thugs, especially muggers, must be birched. We must rebuild Britain's defence forces, including an independent British nuclear deterrent, and there must be no foreign bases on British soil. The IRA must be crushed by all means necessary. Ulster is British forever. Communist subversion in the schoolroom, in industry, in the media, must be rooted out. And now tonight's Ooh. football results. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was, yeah, after all that, they just cut to a cartoon. And yeah. all that. Is this a publicity video for Euro Disney? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is it? I don't know, is it? No, that's is the it? new Labour Party political <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> the National Front, perhaps? Well, let's reveal the source. The National Front will put the right British people first in jobs and housing. Britain is our country, and we want it back. We did not fight so that Britain could become the bankrupt offshore island of Europe or so that the land we love could be invaded by millions of Afro-Asian immigrants. No wonder the little girl's hiding her face. Hey, <laughs> uh, yes, it's the dear old uh, National Front demonstrating a wide range of popular support, so from retired soldiers to dim housewives, <laughs> and a deeply unimpressive party political broadcast. <laughs> Bizarrely, the National Front has now split into two, one being the old-fashioned Nazi-style party and the other called the Third Way, presenting a new environment-friendly, eco-fascist image. Presumably <laughs> they wear biodegradable jackboots, save the whale swastikas, and will allow coloured people into the country, provided they're green. <laughs> so, uh, at the end of that histrionic round, the worrying trend that's beginning to emerge is that uh, Ian and Danny have a less than satisfactory eight, and Paul and Steve have a simply red-hot twelve. And so to our reliably obtuse odd one out round for talented celebrities, which is the Kylie Minogue. Paul, you're uh, <laughs> contractually obliged to begin with uh, Chairman Mao, Ronnie Biggs, Her Majesty the Queen, and Mr. Harold Blumenthal of Victoria Square, Birmingham. <laughs> how, how, Howard Blumenthal. Harold. How? Harold Blooming. Harold. Blumenthal um, of Victoria Square, it, Birmingham. Something to do with. Pop music. Chairman Mao was mentioned in a Beatles lyric. Ronnie Biggs, the Sex Pistols, did a song with him. The song Don't Cry For Me, Howard Blumenthal. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I never left you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've no idea. I could imagine. Just in a perverse manner, it's Howard Blow, whatever his name is. <laughs> Howard Blumenthal, Blumenthal. Um, simply because it, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> It's an interesting answer. It's no, him I think because I know it's him. This one. Um, yes. I know this is going to come as a bit of a surprise to know <laughs> an answer. Um, I think this is to do with stamps. Because the only is. reason Howard Blumenthal is famous is because he once appeared on a stamp behind the Queen by mistake, sort of waving and saying, Hi, Mum. Yes. Well, you have to pick one who hasn't been on a stamp. Ronnie Biggs is the only one that hasn't been on a stamp. <laughs> Thank goodness Paul got that. <laughs> <laughs> is that the answer? Actually, well, I'll, uh, I'll give uh, one, big one each. On uh, I'll it. give Ian it for well, getting it right. one each, me reason. for getting it right and Paul for not knowing. That's <laughs> <good>. <laughs> and Paul for actually nominating you the one who You thought of becoming a judge, Angus. <laughs> I think he said Ronnie Biggs slightly before you, did he? Uh, yes, I think he did, actually. Uh, it's Ronnie Biggs, as all the others have appeared on postage stamps. Ronnie Biggs uh, hasn't appeared on any, but he has stolen a lot. And uh, Mr Blumenthal appeared by mistake, standing next to the Queen on a stamp from Grenada. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Blumenthal's picture should have been lopped off, as protocol dictates that you're not allowed to appear on a stamp unless you're royal or dead. So presumably if the Queen had been standing next to the mouldering corpse of George III, there wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> Steve, four scintillating personalities for you. Norman Major, Chris Patton, Roger Moore, and the lovely Eunice Stubbs. Mm. Mm. Um, well, well, what does this face tell you? Um, blank. <laughs> um, um, which one of them's been on a stamp? That's where you're going to Yeah. 
Where's Mr. Blumenthal? He's in there yeah. in the background. It's a tricky one, this, I have to... They're all actors, confess. except Roger Moore. Moore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. No. See, the answer is it's Chris Patton, as all the others have modelled knitting patterns. Oh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> when you say it, it's so obvious. <laughs> It was there. Well, we gave you the clue in pattern. Of course, oh, Chris Patton. Yes, he took his name from Chris Patton, uh, knitting pattern. Uh, Norma modelled a. <laughs> Have you got off your <laughs> head? <laughs> <laughs> you gave us the clue in Chris Patton. Yes. <laughs> you said we've all been in the army because you got Norma Major. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. They've all been smokers, Eunice Stubbs. <laughs> <laughs> and they've all written Norman acts. Yes. All involved in um, record attempts for the sexual act. That's Roger Moore, oh, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> That's, uh, this is degenerating into a farce. <laughs> That's not based on his name, either. Danny, mm. some uh, all too familiar faces for you. Gaza. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I can answer questions on other things. <laughs> Nigel Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Chris Eubank. Mm. And Prince Andrew. Right. Well, um, no, I don't know. I have no idea. Three of them haven't got any eyes. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right, you can have okay. a point for that, yes, Ian. Uh, Paul, any ideas, Steve? Knitting patterns? <laughs> <laughs> now you're guessing here, mm -hmm. aren't you? Uh, no, it isn't, although it does have something to do with clothes. Uh, three of them have been voted, you know, best dressed. Um, man at CNA in the window. <laughs> Best tie of the year. Award. No, no, you're right. Best Absolutely. Suit. Two oh. points. Yes, uh, it's the odd one out. Is uh, who? Who are you going to say? Um, Nigel Kennedy. Good. Uh, who's the only one uh, not to win Best Dressed Man of the Year? Uh, still, it wouldn't take much. Just a complete overhaul of his wardrobe and the incineration of everything he's ever worn. <laughs> and finally, in this round, Ian. Four pillars of society. Uh, Robert Maxwell. Who's he? <laughs> Cyril Smith. Oh, I remember him. Mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe. And Derek Jameson. Mm -hmm. Well, um, three of them died in suspicious circumstances, didn't they? Derek Jameson was hired under Mr. Smith. <laughs> <Sir. laughs> <laughs> well, Robert Mo M I can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> the treatment's working. Yes. Robert Maxwell, <clears throat> I mean, it, it was alleged. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was murdered by Mossad. Marilyn Monroe was murdered by uh, the FBI. And Derek Jameson murdered Radio <laughs> 2. <laughs> and the English language. Yeah. Is it a Silver Smith set the other three? <laughs> <laughs> could, it, could it be that? It um, might, could it be that? It couldn't, unfortunately, no. <laughs> no one's ever eaten three Robert <laughs> Maxwell. <laughs> Not even Gary Lineker. <laughs> I'll tell you, the answer is uh, Cyril Smith, Marilyn Monroe and Derek Jameson were all born out of wedlock. Wow. Whereas uh, Robert Maxwell, of course, was a different sort of bastard. <laughs> all of which uh, genealogical trivia brings us gratefully to the end of this round. At which point uh, Ian and Danny are dragging their heels with ten and Paul and Steve are racing down the home straight with fifteen. And so we trot spunkily into our final missing words round, <laughs> each team being force-fed a frantic it's selection It's very difficult to trot spunkily. Yeah. <laughs> By God, you're the man to do it. Yeah. You should try it sometime. I don't call him TV's Mr. Mr. Sex for nothing. <laughs> no, I have to pay them a great deal of money. <laughs> Uh, yes, each team is force-fed a frantic selection of headlines, but with the odd word or words deleted. Uh, tell us what they are or what they could be is our traditional challenge. Those lucky enough to be coming last kick off, so Ian and Danny, mm -hmm. to your marks. Uh, Kinnock leaves his what on the shelf for now? Korea. 1993 diary. Uh, <laughs> um, memoir plans, memoir plans. actually. No, you have to say Just it for me, memoir, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, Block Hesseltine Watts, says Cecil. Uh, new name for Canary Wolf. <laughs> Block Hesseltine. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Spree? It is Spree. Extraordinary, you should know that. <laughs> Next, uh, Pope and Carey at odds on what? Favourite in the 230. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. Uh, no, women priests. On... Women priests. Women Very priests. Your next, Murdoch to bid for soul rights to what? Everything. Everything. 
<laughs> apparently he's got it. Yeah. TV tennis is actually ah. the answer. Mm. Uh, and lastly, a Perro sets experts a poser as he moves into what? All male cinema. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, into lead, isn't it? I'll give you two for, uh, for that. Pole Move. position is actually. Uh, the answer, yeah. and you're three points behind anyway. So <laughs> uh, right, Paul and Steve, here are your missing words. Happy Anne leaps at the chance of a ride on what? <laughs> oh, it's all yours. Is it Hesseltine's Golden Labrador? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not what I've got here, no. Desi? That's absolutely right. Desert Orchid? Uh, Desi is the answer. Who's Desi? Des O'Connor. Mm. Uh, Desert Orchid. <laughs> the bloke used to be married to Lucille Ball. Oh, Desi Arnaz <laughs> Jr. Fine. We remember him. Uh, who descended from two pound monkey? Gaza. <laughs> man? Must be one pound monkey, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, man is actually the right answer, yes. Next, uh, Maggie is a lady, but not a what? Monkey. <laughs> not above appearing in readers' wives. <laughs> Let's hope um, not. Countess. Countess, yeah. yes, you can have two points for a countess, although I think you probably said it after I did. No. Uh, next, Fergie learns how to be a what? Mother. Virgin. <laughs> Claimant. Uh, <laughs> Helicopter. <laughs> Claimant is the nearest. Millionaire is actually the answer. And oh, finally, Mella is on what? Fire. <laughs> that that Rob Lowe video? <laughs> Golden <laughs> Labrador? <laughs> I think we're gradually going back through the show now. And uh, The ball is, the in ball? fact, what we were looking the for. Ball. No, you have to say it beforehand, I'm sorry. <laughs> all of which pathetic attempts at clairvoyance herald the end of this marathon uh, contest. And the upshot of it all is that this week's Reliant Robins are Ian and Danny with 16. And uh, this week's Stretch Limos are Paul and Steve with 21. Mm. A magnum of champagne to our winners, a bottle of meths to our losers. <laughs> but uh, before they dive for the nearest bar, there's a little matter of our oh, caption yes. competition. Ian and Danny, what did you think of uh, for this one? A Thailand, Thailand street market, she's saying. You can't say you don't like it until you've tasted one. <laughs> <laughs> is, is she saying it's a golden Labrador? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's John Major showing his, um, his common touch, saying, so you've been a dog for how long? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Do you enjoy it? Is, is it a uh, good is job? It, isn't that the man from the postage stamp in the back again? <laughs> 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 this, is, this is Harold Blumenthal. Good Lord. Paul and Steve, your thoughts for this one? Reincarnation, proof at last. <laughs> um, this is the set of Damien 3. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, new, new mirror chief absconds with piggy bank. <laughs> News, newspaper proprietor in miracu miraculous time tunnel escape. Um, <laughs> Did you ever see that program, Time Tunnel? It was the most amazing Fantastic thing. Fantastic program. Yeah, the, the bloke, two people used to travel through time and space. One wearing a Norfolk jacket, <laughs> the other one this olive green sort of sweatshirt, and they'd walk around in the Crusades, and not once did anyone say, Why are you wearing an olive green sweatshirt? <laughs> Yeah. Which, uh, Can we just enough? say that as uglies, we're quite pleased to have won. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, uh, yeah. right. we're, we're, we're abiding by Californian law here. You're entitled to win, right? Mm. <laughs> You're aesthetically challenged. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 they're other. <laughs> Better than being ignorant of the news. <laughs> On, uh, on which popular note we say uh, thank you to our guests, uh, Ian Hislop and Danny Baker, Paul Merton and Steve Steen. And I leave you with news that Conservative Party image consultants have expressed fears about the public behaviour of John Major. In future, they want him to blow his nose into a handkerchief. <laughs> Sport and Frank Bruno psychs out his latest opponent at the weigh-in. And finally, in a touching gesture, Ian Botham extends a hand of friendship to the touring Pakistanis. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Don't forget, tomorrow night is Top Gear Night on UK TV, people, with guests including Carol Vorderman, Sanjeev Baskar, and Johnny Vegas. But next tonight, airport. <laughs> <laughs>